Um, Bill, we can hand it over to Bill Bottoms at this point, I believe, for an introduction of Ajit Manocha. Okay, Bill. Well, I have, I have no slides, uh, just audible, but Ajit Manocha has been a leader in the semiconductor industry uh, for the last 40 years. Um, he's been active and became a leader. His education initially was from India, where he, where he was educated at the University of Delhi. Uh, and his, his graduate education was at Kansas State University. Uh, since that time, uh, initially starting as work in, in Bell Laboratories, uh, he's led a number of companies uh, mostly focused on manufacturing and putting things into practical use. Uh, he was the executive VP of Worldwide Operations of Spansion. Uh, he was the Semiconductor Industry Association chairman, uh, first vice chairman, then chairman. And today he serves as the CEO of SEMI, which is the largest organization of corporations that participate in the electronics industry. Uh, in between, uh, he, he, in addition to Spansion, he, he was uh, CEO of Global Foundries. And it's a pleasure for us to have Anit, Jimosh, Anit Manosha as one of our sponsors, uh, as an active member of the Roadmap Activity, and as a plenary speaker in this meeting. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. We're in a virtual world. We have no clue where everybody is, but we all know that virtually we're all together. First of all, Bill and Bill, thank you for inviting me to speak at this uh, important symposium. And as you know, that this is very near and dear to my heart to sponsor, support the HIR symposium. And uh, it's really unfortunate that we cannot be in person Last uh, year, we spent most of my time, uh, like everybody else, on Zoom class, Zoom meetings, and uh, we got a lot accomplished. But everything has changed in our lives, the way we li live, the way we work. And hopefully, in 21, things will start changing, perhaps by the end of this year. So what I want to accomplish in the next 25 minutes or so to give you my view on how the industry is uh, doing post-pandemic, what are the prospects for the next 10 to 15 years, and what role you all folks of HIR uh, workforce have to play to, to really enable the growth and success we need in the industry. And the reason I'm saying this is because you have already been the winners for this industry because what you have done in the last three, four years is exemplary. And I will probably in my closing, I will show you what I'm talking about. And uh, before I get started, let me just uh, remind everybody what are the uncertainties we're facing in 2021. We all know that COVID has changed our lives drastically but the rollout of vaccine has started in US, but it is still a major concern. I mean, until the entire world is vaccinated or until we get the herd immunity around the world, the lives will not be same. But the good news is it is starting. The good news is that the vaccine was developed in the record time by not one company, but by multiple companies. So that's really, uh, I will say, a good uh, hopeful thinking here. Other uncertainties, last three, four years, we had massive trade issues and a lot of geopolitical tensions. And uh, during the last six months of 2020, there were several new export restrictions and that, that have really hampered our supply chain and creating a lot of uncertainty in, in our industry. With a change of administration, Things will take time to get settled, but these uncertainties will still be with us for a, for a time to come. Uh, the other issue is that although our industry is very resilient and did a very good job in growth because we have demonstrated beyond any doubt the semi-industry is vital to fight the pandemic. That's why our industry has done so well and has been growing, but 
that geoeconomical issues are still of serious concerns because there are many industries which are still struggling and they probably will struggle, for example, travel, entertainment, the restaurants, and many other industries are still in very bad shape. But those geoeconomical issues, we are not totally immune to them, despite our industry in good shape. <clears throat> and also, in our industry, the recent uh, news that, uh, which is a kind of a mixed blessing, shortage of, uh, of supply uh, for, for auto industry, other, generally that's a sign of growth. That means there's a capacity shortage. And of course, that means we will continue to grow uh, both materials and components as well as the capacity tightness. Uh, it will probably sustain for the next couple of years, but this growth will actually only help the momentum. So having said these kind of uncertainties around us, I think the, our industry leaders are very, very savvy and they know how to navigate through these uh, turbulent times. But uh, this is my, one of my favorite slides, which shows that how our industry has grown over the last five, six decades. And if you look at the, the decades before year 2000, there used to be one or two killer applications every two, three years. And we used to have cycles up and down cycles. But in last two decades, uh, the number of disruptions are, uh, are really significant. And actually shows that the, with the IOTs and uh, uh, you know, com cloud computing and many other apps in, uh, in the last decade, now into this decade of 2020, IoT, wearables, big data, quantum computing, new memory servers, and so on. And you know, this, this is just you know, phenomenal that the op opportunities are endless. In fact, many of the people like me who are old timers, we say, I wish I was starting in this industry today instead of four decades ago. So I will say this is the most exciting time for our industry. And why it even makes more exciting is that if you look at this slide, which you have probably seen from my previous presentation uh, two years ago, that we are growing exponentially. And we are around going to be $450 billion, uh, give and take a few billions here and there for uh, total IC revenue. In last 60 years, it took us to 450 billions. But in next 10 to 15 years, we will double to one trillion. Now I say 10 to 15 years because I did not, or anybody did not predict there would be a pandemic like COVID. Although COVID did not slow us down, but there could be other issues which can slow us down, geopolitical issues, geoeconomical issues can slow us down. So 10 or 15 is in that ballpark. And the fact that I believe this is gonna happen, if I look at this slide, these numbers have been underpinned by IBS, by my friend Handel Jones, he has actually produced information on segment by segment, how each segment will do in the next 10 to 15 years. And his number adds up to be 1.08 trillion by 2030. So I'm pretty sure that he's gonna be right. And uh, whether it's 2030 or 2031 or 32, it's not gonna be 2060 or 2050. It will be 2032 or 33. Now, <laughs> As I mentioned, the number of uh, disruptions are, are many, and some of them, like AI, is really transforming the markets and applications. Virtually AI interfaces with every industry in, on this planet you can think of, and it's changing, changing the, the way we do business. Uh, IoT, Internet of Things to Internet of Everything, Smart Mobile Everywhere, Wearable and Health, data to the, to the cloud and data centers, aerospace and defense, autonomous vehicles, all these things are really changing our lives drastically. And this is the part of the digital transformation or era of the digital transformation. And if you really then hone into what are the, the growth areas, you can see that the automotive is growing by 11%, Kager year after year. In fact, I used to say that the automotive contents will double in the next five years. And one of my colleagues from automotive industry said, Ajit, you are understating your growth on automotive, uh, IC consumption of auto for automotive. He thinks that it will be close to three times 
in next five years. The, if you look at the computing and wireless, which are with a large base, they're still growing three to 4% year after year. That's a huge growth. And I think there is a, there's a definitely a lot of uh, optimism here. And again, just to summarize the growth uh, drivers or market drivers, data centers and 5G with all the Zoom calls, all the working from home, and all the social media activities are, are on the rise. So that means there's demand for data centers and faster communication, hence 5G becomes uh, very vital. And uh, of course, all the companies are learning how to do digital transformation because believe it or not, any company in the world is, is a technology company these days. No, nobody can say that I'm not a technology company. And then if you are a technology company, you cannot be an old fashioned technology company. You need to be a digital company. So the digital transformation is really taking a major uh, toll on the, on the growth uh, for the industry. And the, what I mean by toll is that everybody's learning how to really do digital transformation. It's not easy to really understand that. But if we don't transform, we'll get transformed by somebody else. So that's why this is very important. Strong demand for growth platforms like smartphones, high performance computing, automotive, IoT, CPUs, AI accelerator, and I can go on with this list, but I'm sure you are all familiar with many of the growth drivers, the market drivers, which are really helping grow our industry. This is my favorite slide. This really tells me, and I think you will probably agree with me after I tell you the story of this, I've been uh, involved with the World Economic Forum. I'm sure you all heard of World Economic Forum, the Davos of, uh, uh, in winter Davos of uh, World Economic Forum where every uh, politician and uh, many senior executives gather every year in, the, uh, in Switzerland and they talk about how we can help the society uh, and with the prosperity and uh, better living, better health, better uh, better lifestyle for the underdeveloped countries, of course. And they all get together and they really talk about how the world can be a better place for everyone and especially with the, for the underdeveloped countries. And after getting involved with World Economic Forum, I realized that they are actually rolling out Industry 4.0 applications around the world to improve the manufacturing, improve the productivity, improve the lifestyle of people, and I happened to speak at uh, one of the, the, the meetings of World Economic Forum, and I said, you know, World Economic Forum is really doing a great service to the world with Industry 4.0, whereas we as SEMI are really trying to enable the next big revolution, which is Industry 5.0. Now, to just give you the background, it took us 89 years from industry 1.0 to 2.0, that's from steam engine to electricity in 1870. Then it took us another 90 some years to go from industry 2.0 to industry 3.0. That's when in late 1989 or 1980 time frame, when the electronics, computing, automation, information technology became the big, big game changer. In that last decade, uh, when Industry 4.0 was uh, announced, and that was enabled by artificial intelligence, IoT, 4G, 5G, big data, cloud computing, advanced robotics, machine learning, and many others. But it took only 44 years to go from 3.0 to 4.0. In that same meetings in uh, uh, World Economic Forum, I asked a show of hands, how many years will it take to go from 4 to 5, because today, we are enabling 5.0, and the enablers are quantum computing, smart manufacturing, blockchain, cryptocurrencies, digital economy, autonomous machines, 6G, maybe 7G, and so on. And I asked 44 years, zero hands, 30 years, many hands, 20 years, still few hands. So I think the, the unanimous uh, uh, answer was almost 30 years to get industry 5.0. Today, industry 4.0 is bringing tens of millions of dollars of productivity improvement and the, the efficiency improvement 
for many, many industries around the world. And imagine once the 5.0 is rolled out, it's going to go make a, a strong, order of magnitude more improvement for, 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 for all of us. And I tell you, I can stay here and talk about quantum computing for all day. Not that I understand it, but I understand the, the merits of quantum computing, what it can do for us, for the world, is just phenomenal. I mean, I com compare quantum computing with the classical computing, our mainframe computers, which was in 70s. During my graduate work, I used them. Those mainframe computers were like big computers in a, in a big auditorium type size room. And they used to work under a strong air conditioning and all those things, and, but very slow. Then quantum computing, which are just coming in the next one decade or so, uh, they are still in the lab stage. They can do those calculations in seconds, which classical computer can take sometimes years to do it. Again, this is really very, very exciting, the way industry is moving. And the fourth, fourth industrial revolution is on steroids, and we're enabling the path to the fifth industrial revolution. Now, what does it mean? I talked about so many new drivers, so many changes. Basically, everything is changing. And thanks to Bill, uh, Bill Chen for, for this slide, I, I stole a couple of slides from Bill Chen's presentation at Semicon Taiwan, and I repurposed them. And uh, I think uh, this, this says a very powerful story here. Maintaining the pace of progress with, will require new materials, new device types, new system architects, and innovative solutions to design, cost time to market, and security. This particular phrase tells you that your job security is there. So, but in order to create job security for others, you, the fellows of this symposium, have a big role to play because just seeing what we need to do is not going to happen. You are enabling it. You are going to make it happen. And I'll say a little bit more about that. But one thing which also I don't think people understand that. The digital companies, they don't have the same appreciation of semiconductors as they should. Because today, semicon semiconductors are inside everything. It's not just the Intel CPU inside everything, every computer. It's semiconductors in everything, inside everything. And the world still does not know this. And why I'm saying this? Because you can really do it do this for yourself. Ask the young students coming out of university, what, what do you want to do? Nobody will tell you they want to go work for semiconductor companies. But once you educate them that, that semiconductors are essential for everything, and they are transforming our lives, and they will say, wow, I didn't know that. And you can tell them that these digital companies will not exist if there was no data centers, and data centers will not exist if there are no chips then they will get the appreciation of semi-industry. And we, why I'm also telling you this? Because we have a massive shortage of talent in our industry. If our industry is gonna go double in next 10, 15 years, we also need to have double the talent. May not be linear, but we need a lot more talent. There's a big shortage of talent. Again, I can stand here all day and talk about what SEMI is doing to, to, to deal, deal with that issue, but that's, really starts with all of us to improve the industry image campaign. The semi-industry is vital for everything we do here. Also, people don't remember or don't recall this. Many countries are starting to actually recognize the semiconductor industry is the strategic industry for their national security and economic security and economic growth. And this is coming, this is a new thing which is developing in the last two, three years. So again, very important part of this uh, discussion and what role you need to play to make sure that this becomes an a ongoing industry image campaign that we as the semi folks are really helping transforming the world. And again, I bring it to, back to you that you are the enablers to envision the future via HIR. And I think uh, there are a couple of quotes. Again, this slide uh, took from uh, Bill Chan. I like this one. The best way to predict the future is to invent it. And that was by Alan Key from computers, uh, one of the computer scientists said that. So, and the future is system integration uh, by Philip Wong of TSMC. I think these are good wisdoms and they really are very relevant for our business, 
for our activities and for, for our uh, agenda going forward. Now, what are the attributes HIR is playing? So, I talked about the digital transformation. Actually, digital transformation is more like a convergence of technology, chaos and business disruptions more than ever. There's immense need for a pre-competitive technology roadmap addressing future visions, difficult challenges, and potential solutions. Now, this is a story I shared with you long, two, two years ago or three years ago. I was part of the SIA when we, we stopped the I, I, ITRS roadmap. And when I joined SEMI, many stakeholders told me, Ajit, we feel really you know, empty without roadmaps. We need those roadmaps as a guide for us to have our own strategic roadmaps and so on. So, HI, so I decided to sponsor HIR as well as IRDS. So heterogeneous integration through SAP is a powerful technology direction for system integration to accelerate progress for its advancement of technology to benefit human, humanity. And this is, HIR is for everyone. You and seven plus billion people together with SEMI, I think this is really a very, very important task that you are, have undertaken. And I'll make one more statement in a minute. And that, that will actually tell you that why the role you are playing is, is so critical. But before I come to that, I want to say that SEMI is not just Ajit Manoja standing here and talking about, about HIR. SEMI has a platform where we bring the whole world together or bring the world to you. For example, the think tanks. We have think tanks for most of the big initiatives. Our partners include ESDA, FlexTech, Fab Owners Association, MSIG, MEM Sensors Industry, Industry Group, Letty, Fraunhofer, IMAC. You know, we have a ma massive focus on the, uh, on, the, on the exposition conferences, semicons. Unfortunately, we are very limited semicons because of COVID, but I'm pretty confident that from next year, things will get better. We spent uh, enormous time in helping industry to com comply with the EHS requirements to make everybody keep everybody safe and healthy. We're dealing with multiple uh, nasty gases and, and, and chemicals in our manufacturing. So EHS plays a very big role. We have 170 technology programs uh, every year, 20 plus technology communities. Again, SEMI is really more than just semicons and it's more than ever now with 2,400 members worldwide and growing. So what are the key takeaways? SAMI is the right platform to recognize your contribution in generating the first edition of HIR. And I tell you, this is, you made me proud by publishing this in 2019. If I look into this book, there is a lot of information that you put together. This is really the compilation of the brain power of the best of the best of our industry. And I'm really proud of you and I'm proud of the work you've done. And I'm hoping that pretty soon you'll print the edition number two coming in this year. And I tell you, I will be your advocate telling the world that the people of HIR Symposium, HIR Workforce have done this wonderful work. I have bragged about this report like this is the work, I have done it. And as you know, people say, success is of many fathers. And I take a lot of pride in what you've done. And I'm gonna be your ambassador for the publishing the second edition going forward. Focus on making HIR useful for government funding, research institution, academia, and innovate, innovation, innovators at SEMI members across the global microelectronic design and manufacturing supply chain, panel level packaging, standard shows, you know, tangible results with the Intel participating and, and so on. Good work in hybrid bonding in Europe and positive to see funding for research in AI, quantum, et cetera. The new US administration is looking to invest in semiconductor manufacturing. I'm sure you heard of CHIPS Act. SEMI has fingerprints on all that. And I will say that opportunity is knocking and SEMI is working to answer. And let's all remember the role we must play. Despite the trade challenges 
of last year, last four years, US, China, then Japan, Korea in 2019. I cannot promise you that these things will get resolved or these things will be easier going forward. Nobody can promise what politicians will do. Politicians will do what they want to do. But I tell you, I want to close with, with my remark, the phrase that I loved from Shimon Perez, late Shimon Perez says, politics divides the world and technology can unite it. I think he, he, he was so right and this is very relevant. Regardless of all the disruptions, whether it's a pandemic or geopolitical issues, but we need to continue to work together and bring technology to life so that we can deal with the difficult calamities like pandemic and other uh, issues so that we can work together and enrich the society and create a lot of prosperity for all. Thank you, keep up the great work. And I must say, I'm very, very proud of you and hope to see you in person during the next symposium. Bye, bye for now. Honored to I'm be very here. glad you are here. And thank you, for the, uh, thank you for the presentations that you that, uh, kicked off this morning. So um, I'd like to ask a question sure. about, to you about what do you see the uh, future generations of um, technologies for hydrogenous integration? Because if I see all the speakers that we have today, uh, we will need engineers, technologists, scientists to be able to train knowledgeable in the field. And uh, that would be a very important question for us into the future. Bill, that's really a very uh, uh, important question that you're raising. And that's the challenge that this industry has. And if you remember my presentation from this morning, I think this industry is on a, uh, on a exponential growth pattern right now. I mean, we, it took us 60 years to come to 450 billion IC revenue, and it's gonna double in the next 10 to 15 years for sure. But uh, the growth is not just the linear silicon business. It is the, the, the presentation I just got the, the last part of Gordon's presentation uh, Gordon Keeler's presentation about how the photonics will play a big role in the future journey of, uh, of semiconductor industry uh, is, is very important. The problem we are facing is that we need, basically we need all uh, technologies with the STEM education. And the problem really is, and this is a serious problem, the number of STEM education uh, graduate students is going downhill everywhere in the world. In US, the STEM education enrollment in high school is down from 20 some percent in 90s to now 11% uh, as in this decade. In Asia, which is where STEM education is still highly regarded, very, very popular. But the number of children used to be two per couple uh, 30 years ago, now it's down to 1.3 children per couple. So the, the, the total quantity of STEM education foundational students is gone down by a factor of two around the world. And then people are not getting inspired to come to our industry, even if they have STEM education. They think going to a digital media company is, uh, is, the, is much more sexy. Uh, if you ask students what you want to do, they, they want to really focus on, uh, you know, companies like Google, Facebook, and, and Amazon type companies. Nothing wrong with that, but they don't understand that without semiconductors, these companies have no existence. So I think the role we need to play, we as the executives of this industry, to go to the universities and colleges and high school students and inspire the heck out of them on the transformation that your innovation is gonna bring, the the role that HIR is playing is uh, basically you are really a transforma transforming the, the industry to in terms of whether it's a Moore's law. Uh, people used to still say the Moore's law is uh, in, the, in the last days and I don't agree with them at all. 
I think HIR is the enabler of uh, extending the life of Moore's law and hence extending the functionality of uh, our devices, which are creating tremendous societal and economic benefits. So the role that uh, HIR is playing is, is so monumental. I fully appreciate it, fully understand it. I think you need to also, you means the, the folks in this symposium and, and your colleagues uh, uh, outside the, this, this symposium need to really brag about the, the, the work you're doing and how this will transform the lives. Why I'm saying this transformation word very strongly, the young students of today, they really want to, they don't understand what companies like Applied Materials or LAM or Intel do, uh, but they do understand that they want to play a role in transforming the world. That word actually resonates with them, with the young generation, which is a very good thing, but, but they're confused. They don't know what it, how they will do it. But I think uh, you guys can uh, really inspire them and uh, help grow the talent we need to, 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 to support the, the number of ideas, innovations uh, that you have been talking in your uh, HIR edition one and now edition two, hopefully this year. It's just a lot, to, lot to, be, to be gained from this. And I think this is a problem we all need to collectively drive. And the problem is really strong, serious and is fundamentally uh, uh, issue uh, at the at the grassroots uh, starts with the high school and even before high school. Ajit, we do have a couple of questions for you in the chat, if you don't mind. Um, one of them comes from Richard Ott, who says, "Semi is working with the federal government to strengthen U.S. Semi capability. What is the position of packaging in that effort?" Great question, very timely. Uh, recently with the CHIPS Act, uh, SAMI is, uh, I think uh, there's a suggestion that we should create a manufacturing wing of that. And SAMI is actually is in process of assembling a team and either will partner with the other in interested parties or will go ourselves. And especially for the packaging, <clears throat> my team is uh, discussing with the, with the ASE uh, as we speak that Bill, uh, with the, there's a plan to talk to, uh, to, to T and Wu about this. So really jointly, we should uh, form that manufacturing, uh, manufacturing group, uh, which will support the, the federal funding uh, to strengthen the US capability. So, so I think, uh, uh, Rachel, this is a work in progress. This is very recent, and we are taking a, a, playing a big role there to take it further. And one more question for you. Yeah. Um, this one comes from Chris Bailey. Uh, he says, you mentioned quantum computing as a key for industry 5.0. From a packaging perspective, I wonder how this is commercially achievable given the very low temperature required. Wonder if you could comment on that. Well, that is the challenge. <laughs> uh, you are absolutely right. Uh, today, this is uh, you know, probably a computer which will work in, the, uh, in a lab scale only. But uh, the challenge is that what are the new materials which will actually reduce the, the energy consumption and uh, have the operating temperatures uh, uh, like room temperatures. So, and there is a lot of research being done, needs to be done. And it, it is uh, one of the challenges and one of the mission critical projects of many companies, uh, including the material companies and applied materials type company. So they're all looking into alternate materials, which will actually eliminate the requirement of uh, Kelvin, zero degree Kelvin temperature, uh, operating temperature for the, for the quantum computing. I think we don't know yet the, what, how this will work, but I'm very uh, optimistic about it. And I really look at quantum computer today is the mainframe computers of 70s. They were like, big bag of computers in a, in a big building, uh, a computer was there and it used to be highly, it's air conditioned sensitive at that time. And uh, we used to, I know, remember my graduate work, uh, used to punch cards and feed the data and then get the data next day. And, uh, and today those super computers, uh, the pain from computers are the size of the, the smartphones in our pockets. So we come long ways there. 
And I think we're going to have the similar transformation on quantum computers, not at zero degree uh, Kelvin only. Uh, uh, the requirement will go away, but also this the, the footprint is so so large. I think uh, I'm very hopeful in my lifetime, uh, next 20 to 30 years. I'm very optimistic about many things here. I think the quantum computers will be take the same transformation to a pocket computer and the power of quantum computing is going to be there and zero degree Kelvin requirement will go away. So, I mean, just take another example, which is probably not a good an analogy. Uh, you've, you've seen the three vaccines rolled out this year. The two vaccines are at uh, very low temperature, liquid nitrogen cooled. Uh, but the third vaccine Johnson Johnson has come with, which doesn't require cooling at the so I think there's a lot of brain power and talent in, in the world. This problem is so important that many countries are sponsoring huge amount of grants to quantum computing. That's the quantum supremacy word that has come in. And the idea is to really you know, drive the, the innovation to make them very practical uh, use of, uh, of quantum computers. And this is something I'm extremely passionate about it. And I think the I'm reading in the chat that this is going to be the key for Industry 5.0, and I'm so convinced about that because today Industry 4.0 is uh, being rolled out by World Economic Forum and by many other companies to get so many societal and economic benefits. And imagine once the quantum computing comes uh, with the Industry 5.0, it's going to change the way drastically the way we live today and the way we work today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. 